guys, it's Kelly from Cards by Christine here with you on a paper pumpkin Thursday. Oh, it has been a like bang, 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 bang day. So, well, let's make sure that I'm on before I uh, get too into this. I had work. I bugged out for a little bit for a dentist appointment. I got, I had an appointment after work for my car to get fixed. And here I am not looking for what I'm looking for. Um, let's see what else i cleaned my car i cleaned the floors i had to drop the boys off okay i'm seeing a lot of hellos ready to rock and stamp i love it hello hello to susan cindy mary and donna thank you so much for being here so excited i am so excited we have tigger in the house maybe he'll come and say hi or maybe not <laughs> hi marcia Okay, we are all locked and loaded, set, ready to go, and I am so excited. I'm not going to lie, not even joking. I haven't even looked at the kit. Now, normally, I've never, I never opened the kit prior to Paper Pumpkin Live. I want to put my hands on it for the first time, just like you guys, um, but I didn't even look at, there's a couple of Facebook groups that kind of show off the kits and show some, sometimes some alternatives and stuff like that. I didn't even have time. <laughs> I was going to today, but it was so chaotic. So I didn't get an opportunity to. So I honestly, other than putting together the cover photo, which was a month and a half, if not a little better ago, I haven't a clue <laughs> what's in this box. And honestly, I don't even remember what was on the cover photo back then. So we are going to be in for a surprise. And oh, I think I got, so I, I kind of have this tradition of getting Taco Bell um, when I come over for stamping. I try not to eat Taco Bell that often. So it's kind of my treat. I drive past it every time I come to the hive. So <clears throat> I was tight on time though, but I also didn't eat lunch today. And I'm like, if I don't eat lunch and then I wait until after the live, for supper, which would get me to like eight central time, <laughs> I'm gonna crash. So I was like, I have to, I, so I stopped. The drive-through line was huge. So I decided to go in and they made it really quick. I was very, I didn't even tell them, you know, they were busy. I didn't wanna like pressure them, but man, I was like sweating bullets. So, uh, but I got it, I ate in the car and I got here. Chris was actually, still here and she was setting it up for me which was amazing it was like all the stars aligned today today actually went really really pretty well so hello to everyone else i don't even remember who i all said hi to my brain's still a little scattered but tanya michelle sherry susan sherry did i say that already i don't even know yeah i said it twice in a row <laughs> lynn melanie and sarah hello 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 it is hot here as well. We're just about 90 today. Um, we got a lot of the um, Canada wildfire smoke in our area. We've got a lot of it hanging around these last few days. And I think I was talking to one of my friends at the museum yesterday and I think because um, their kids came in with rosy cheeks and you know it looked like they were getting burnt but it's so hard because because of the haze of the wildfire smoke the sun doesn't appear as like hot or as direct as it is so it's it's just very baffling but over the last few days it really has started to visually clear um it's not clear by any means but day after day i'm noticing that it seems less um thick so yeah so craziness praying for everyone up in canada um man hopefully that clears it's crazy yeah so how has everyone been anyone have any fun and exciting plans for the fourth of july um <clears throat> my husband's birthday is the fourth of july which my husband is a prison guard so it is one of those jobs that you work nights and weekends and holidays so he hasn't had his birthday off in quite a while but he actually has off this year which is very exciting um, Andy took a vacation day, so he's got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off. So we're planning on going um, hiking. Well, we're not hikers, but <laughs> going on a trail um, for a walk at Highcliff State Park. And then, hello, Randy. <clears throat> 
We also plan on going to the fireworks on the night of the 3rd, which is really exciting. And then probably having a pretty low-key day on the 4th, maybe just doing a cookout, hopefully a campfire, stuff like that. Um, and then back to work for me on Wednesday. So we're not going to do late night um, fireworks on the 4th because we're going to do it on the 3rd. So dangerous air quality for three days. Oh, today was the worst for you. Okay, so maybe it's like traveling down farther and I, you know, I don't know. It does, you know, it's still visibly bad. Yeah, we are in um, bad air quality alerts as well. So it's scary and it's so sad. Sorry. <laughs> much more of an orchestrated thing than it than it felt like it was gonna be so um yes let's take a peek hello hi he's okay i don't he's all right yeah, oh. yeah he mo moved up into the window so okay. hi everybody, hi, everybody. <laughs> okay the door is open and you can just lock it on your way out okay sounds Bye. great Bye. there was a flash of chris um she's heading out today is actually her mother's birthday and her brother's birthday your son is a prison guard too oh my goodness so Society needs them. It takes a very special kind of person to do it. That is for sure. My husband is very good at it. And it is, um, I would say it's his calling. And I think um, the prison is better for him being there. But it, it's hard. Um, and I don't know where you're from, Tyra. But here in Wisconsin, um, we have critical vacancies in the prison. Um, my husband's particular prison has a staff vacancy rate of about 55%. So he is working crazy long, um, crazy hours, but someone's got to do it. So appreciate him and all the prison guards out there. Yes. <laughs> so Chris um, is heading out to have supper with her mother and dad. Um, our cousin, my cousin Tom, her brother, is in I think Stevens Point. So he's not around today, but he'll be around this weekend. They're gonna do a nice um, party. So very exciting. Um, glad she gets to enjoy that, and glad I get to be here with you guys. Um, so yeah, okay, let's do this. Let's see. I don't have it on my phone. Um, I never found it. I just. So I'm not sure how many people are on, but we're going to hope that most of everyone who's coming today is on. Um, we'll do roll call and crack this bad boy open. Okay, so today we have um, crafting along with us through their um, through a subscription through Cards by Christine's Paper Pumpkin. So hopefully more people are crafting along with us. Please shout out if you are here um, just for the show, if you're here to make a paper pumpkin. And um, special thanks to Lynn Beasley, Amy Ponce, Laura Wood, Lori, Lori Ransom, Linnea Bertram, Marge Haas, Linda Kester, Sherry Martin, Veronica Montaya, Jolene Shry, Pasty Robinson, uh, sorry, Patsy Roberts, Elaine Rebeck, Diana Muldoon, Barb Freund, Brenda Crudwig, Christina Heiser, Cindy Roundtree, Chris Bertram, and Pat Dufac. So, thank you to everyone who subscribes to Paper Pumpkin. We love it. We are happy that you are here. Later, um, barring I don't forget, we will do a random number generator for a door prize for one of those 18 lucky ladies. And here we go. So June 2023, the kit is called Welcome In. Oh, that's right. I had that long forgotten. Hello, Linda. I'm so glad you're here with us. I'm excited to see what we've got going on in here. So the Welcome In Suite is in the catalog. Um, ooh. So extend your crafting. Make a coordinating card with the Countryside Inn Suite and Welcome Inn add-on. Pair your Welcome Inn paper pumpkin kit with the Countryside Inn Suite to create elegant an elegant alternative card. This suite includes fabulous floral paper, coordinating dies, and more. And don't forget about the cute add-on. It'll turn your card from simply sweet to absolutely divine. So the add-on, I think, that they're talking about are the Welcome Inn dies. These can be purchased through Chris um, 
on her website or through an order that um, you place. You can always contact her. They are still available. So in the past, when they've had these types of products, sometimes they go really fast, but right now they are still available. It's got this cute little um, vase die cut, a die cut for this flower, as well as a piece of greenery. So very cool. Um, still available. Let Chris know if you would like some. She can get them on order for you so that you can use them in coordination with your um, paper pumpkin kit. Now that being said, um, anyone watching along, maybe there also is a add on. Let's see here. I love QR codes. I remember when QR codes came around, weren't really utilized that often or that much. And now they, I feel like, are on the swing back. And let's see where we take. Okay, so we are actually at, so welcome in Paper Pumpkin. Oh, they have a refill for this kit. Very cool. And there are those welcome in dies. So very nice. All right. So, also flip this over. And then if you um, scan the second QR code, that is the coordinating suite um, in the catalog. All right. Fun in the sun. I knew this one was coming up next. So spend a day at the beach with this fun filled kit. So look at all these cutesy little um, sneak peeks. Usually the sneak peeks are very good to give you an idea um, what's to come. So if that trips your trigger, make sure that you are subscribed. You have until, if I recall, I think it's the 10th of the month or the 10th of the month is when they announce the next one. So one or the 9th, 10th, 11th, somewhere in that mix is where they roll over from one month to the next. So if that trips your trigger, make sure that you get in on that. All right, so here is Night of Navy. That is the stamp and spot that we got this time. Here are the beautiful stamps. So we've got a pretty vase. We've got this intricate floral and leaf um, Looks like it's a like miniature background stamp. Friend, oh, so flower, and I'm guessing that's a stem. Friend, you're invited. Thank you for your hospitality and welcome in that really pretty welcome um, scripty font. He's a garden, Hutchinson, can, can, ah, there's a little bug, I don't know if you saw that. Um, I'm guessing that's Kansas. I'm so bad at state abbreviations. He just works regular hours for now anyways. Hope your husband, oh, thank you. Yes, he, Bless his heart is so true. And um, also I like to usually couple that with bless my parents' heart too because they help me in all the ways that I need help. Um, because it's so hard to um, to do all of the parent things. I mean, and don't get me wrong, he is a fabulous father and helps out as much as he can. Um, and we surely enjoy his days off. But when he's on, so their schedule is six days on two days off and typically of those six days five if not six of those are 16 hour shifts so it's crazy we know it <laughs> he knows it okay so let's see here what we've got in this package hello holly okay Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> that was not efficient. Okay. So we have a miniature roll of tear and tape. I love tear and tape. We also have, ooh, adhesive foam strips, it looks like. Ooh, I am intrigued. Okay. We have beautiful um, blue, looks like enamel dots. Okay. Oh, wow. That is so pretty. So all of the envelopes are, huh, they're all the same. Very pretty. So the soft, I'm guessing, boho blue with the um, design on the envelope flap. Okay, so here are, here are our um, die, not, well, die cut imagery. Um, so we've got this beautiful, big, um, not a banner, or why am I blanking here? Um, let's grab the catalog. 
So the Welcome In Suite is in the annual catalog. And I'm gonna bring it up to show you because if you haven't seen it, the coordination is <laughs> on point. Let's see, I should have used the index to find what page it's on. Also, I don't know if I was smart to start from the back. <laughs> All right, let's go to the index. That will be smart. Also, I'm losing my glasses. I'm a little bit of a hot mess right now. Oh, somebody thinks, here's Paper Pumpkin, great. Oh no. Oh really, I thought there was an index. Okay, sorry guys. As I get myself acclimated and together. Also, I haven't had the opportunity to really dive into this um, catalog so much yet, which is oh so sad. So now here I am. Oh, Tigger just pounced on something. Well, you guys, did I grab the wrong catalog? Because that could have happened too. Um, man. Oh, so I thought, I thought this is what we were going to be coordinating with, which is not true. But look at that. You can see where I'm going with this. This um, die and the stamp set that coordinates with this really um, is where my brain went right away. So anyways, I guess I'm not going to find exactly what I was looking for. Um, maybe I will. <laughs> oh, you guys, I am so sorry. But here we have the Countryside Inn Sweet Collection. I love the beautiful tag dies that go with it. You can see here the stamp is one stamp, if I recall. It looks like a, like a braided rug. It's so unique. Um, and then it's got all of the nesting dies with the um, tagged corners, which is so pretty. I love it. Also comes with a embossing and embossing folder as well <laughs> thank you deb thanks for bringing me back together um as well as the blue tone um in all of that beautiful dsp so you can clearly see where some of the imagery that is the coordinating pattern that is on the flap of the envelope so very pretty love that um Here's a bunch of ideas on how to use that. I might need to tie back to that later for our alternative inspiration. Okay, you know, this is why I'm doing this backwards. Normally I start with the little thingy and I surely had that backwards. It was on the bottom of my stack. <laughs> okay, so here are the card bases. So, We've got, again, that beautiful imagery. Oh, look at that. Okay, so these are nested in what they go with. So, no, they're not. <laughs> oh, man. Well, anyways, so this goes with this. I really like that they brought this coral in. Very pretty. Okay, so for this background, here we go. Now we're getting it. I think I just maybe had one of them out of order. Oh, very cool. I'm excited. Okay, here's some more um, dye images to cut out, to punch out, I should say. And lo and behold, here is what we are making. So welcome in Paper Pumpkin Kit, June 2023. Here we are. I always like to flip it over. Um, in the back here, we have our coordinating Stampin' Up! colors. So for your reference, we will be using Balmy Blue, Boho Blue, Calypso Coral, Daffodil Delight, Early Espresso, Misty Moonlight, Night of Navy, which is the color of the Stampin' Spot, and Old Olive. Here's always some inspiration for some of the alternatives that you can make. And we will be making something um, to be determined yet at the end as an alternative. So let's get started. I'm excited. How are you guys? Please share with me. How are you guys feeling about the design of this kit? Um, beautiful paper. Yes, I agree. Um, so what's our first take on the kit? Do we like it? Do we love it? Are we excited or are we um, less inclined to think this is going to be our favorite? 
right off the bat, I'm pretty excited. I think it's really pretty. I um, honestly, like I said, I hadn't yet. Hi, Linda. I hadn't yet even opened it, so I had no idea what to expect. Um, maybe also why I'm struggling a little bit as much as I am. Uh, but also, I think I was very excited to see the coordinating coral. Um, well, not coordinating. It's more of like a complementary color to the color palette. So I think that's going to be really fun. Let me grab quick. I always bring in my own supplies just because I have them. Um, for those of you that don't have access to other supplies, that is absolutely okay. Every paper pumpkin kit comes with an acrylic block the first time you subscribe. I do like to bring in my own D block because it has rounded edges. It's a little more comfortable in your hands, but that is not an issue if you do not have it. Also, I always put my Stampin' Spot to the side and bring in my classic Stampin' Pad. The stamping surface is much larger and it is on a foam um, stamp surface compared to the, oh, it's, it's over there, compared to the um, fabric surface of the Stampin' Spot. The spot will work perfectly fine. However, um, I do bring in my own pad for that reason. Okay, so we are starting off with, thank you for your hospitality. And I do also always like to point out um, that the, in my opinion, our stamps are, the photopolymer stamps start off kind of sticky. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's the word I am using. Um, and I like to stamp it on and off a couple times. You hear that kind of click? I seem to feel like when you um, do that a little bit before you start, you get an opportunity to have a better, cleaner, crisper stamped image. So that's a little tip when you use a brand new stamp pad, or excuse me, photopolymer stamp. I'm sorry to hear that you haven't gotten yours yet. I agree. I feel like all of the sentiments and pieces in this stamp set, well, those two pieces are fine, but the sentiments are all pretty small, um, but I see how they're using them in the design, why they went with the size they went with, but I do think that will make it, in my opinion, a little harder to reuse in other purposes, but we will see. Okay, so thank you for your hospitality. Um, you're gonna center it left to right keeping it pretty close to the bottom to leave room for your flower pot. And then I'm gonna bring in my chamois to get that cleaned off. Okay, I always think it's so funny when the like dark colors, so like that's navy, but it leaves behind a pinkish um, kiss on the stamp. Okay, so that is the only stamping that we need to do for this one. So let's go ahead and try to clean up just a little bit so that A, we don't lose our pieces and B, we don't make a huge mess because that tends to happen from time to time. Okay, so this card is super simple. Um, we are going to go ahead and Dun, 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 dun. Okay, fold and burnish your card base. And then <clears throat> you can take your coral banner. It's not a banner, what should we call this? It's like a ribbon. And it goes nearly to the bottom of the page. We're gonna center it left to right and um, they tell you to use tear and tape. I always give my disclaimer. Again, I have access to a lot of products in the hive here. So I'm gonna use my, um, I'm going to use my liquid glue and save the tear and tape for, uh, in my opinion, tear and tape works amazing for ribbon. Now, there's no reason that it won't work great on paper as well. It totally would. Um, but because I have my liquid glue right here, I'm just gonna pull that out and use that to adhere this piece down. No. Okay. So I'm just checking out the 
front and back on this DSP are, well, not exactly the same, but it's got a faux image. I did not get that centered properly. Another reason why I like using liquid glue, um, let's see here. We've got one and an eighth and four and a quarter is three and a quarter, three and an eighth, one and a half, one and a sixteenth. I thought, uh, one and a half, one and five eighths, I should say. Okay, I just, I did not have that centered well and all of a sudden I needed a little math to get me, that looks better. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I love, 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 love using tear and tape for ribbon. So I'm gonna save that for some ribbon because there is no reason that liquid glue doesn't fit the bill here. Now, very cool, that is what these are for. So the long strips go on the left and right sides. And then the shorter go on the top and bottom. Great idea to ha include these in this kit because uh, when you use a bigger piece of paper or a bigger focal image or whatever you're putting down, um, you don't want it to sag, so you want to be generous with your dimensionals. So to be able to have these pieces really is going to help the integrity of our card. So I'm so happy that they included these adhesives in particular. And my sincere apologies. I have not cut my nails in a long time, and that is sheerly out of lack of time um, and the excuse of never thinking of it when I um, am buying nail clippers. So I hope I'm not fumbling too much here with some of these backs and um, the, the, dement uh, the embellishments ought to be fun when we get to that point. But sorry, as you have to watch me struggle with my gigantically long fingernails. <laughs> oh boy. Another thing I like to do when I have a big piece that I'm putting up on dimensionals, I kind of like to pull the sides away to get some of that tension, um, to create some of that tension to help support the middle. Another place that you could put more dimensional, you could put a dimensional in the middle. And actually I might kind of sneak another one under there because I feel like, especially now that we're gonna be putting the flower pot on a dimensional as well, um, I feel like it would be nice to have a dimensional under there. So I'm gonna sneak. So, so far we've done just as much deconstructing as we have constructing on this card. Um, but hopefully we get into our rhythm in a second here. So if you're crafting along with me, you totally do not have to put a dimensional under the middle. I just feel as though it will help support the structure and integrity of the card. Also, highly advised to have done this before I stuck it down. <laughs> Whoopses. <laughs> okay, we can do this. <laughs> there we go. Also, it's hard um, trying to take adhesive off or a backing off of a dimensional without it um, being stuck to anything. So we're just here to challenge ourselves tonight. Okay, so I'm just gonna sneak that in as far as I can get it. And now I feel a little better about that. Okay, great. So then we're gonna put a dimensional behind the pre-printed um, let's see here, that must be on a different one, the pre-printed vase. So let's see here, that must be one of these. Yes. Okay, so we're going to take one of these. Yep, that'll do it. Hello, Hildy. Thank you so much for joining. So, suggestion to put one of these along the middle. I think it'll balance better if I put one top and bottom. So that is what I am going to do again, just because I have access to my own supplies and I have these dimensionals. Um, another thing you could do is you could take 
the strip and cut it in half and put two halves. Um, or you can do it as pictured because clearly if they are showing it, they must have confidence in it settling that way. For this vase, um, there is a smaller tab on the bottom than the top. So that would be the part that it sits on would be the base and then the larger fluted top would be the top for those who maybe wanted a little help with that. All right, so go ahead and center that left to right. And then last but certainly not least, we have our embellishments, which are on the bottom of the pile. One of the things I love so much about Paper Pumpkin is how easy it is to create a beautiful card in usually no time at all. Um, these cards are so fast um, and they look so pretty. Okay, so I got a little, sh not a smudge, but a like piece of stickiness there. So I'm gonna try to cover that up. Um, and I struggle with random. Um, so like when I'm making a creation, the placement of the embellishments usually stress me out. So I love that um, even something as like where the adhesive placement goes, even though sometimes I do override what they tell me to do, because it is your creation. Make it however you want. Um, but like the placement of the embellishments, love that. Love not even having to think about it. Okay, so here is our first card. Um, I do sometimes, when I remember, try to um, juice it up a little bit with some Stella. So I'm gonna bring in my Stella pen and put some sparkly glitter on the flowers. I love Stella. She's always invited to my parties. <laughs> All right, and then, you know, I might regret this, but I like that a lot, and I plan to try to go over the stitches with Stella. So I'm trying to not go all the way to the edge, and I need, mm -hmm. where did my scrap piece go? Did I really? Here it is. Stella has a tendency to, um, when you repump her, so I'm just trying to get a little bit more down the barrel. It very easily can come out too fast. So I try to protect my workstation when I squeeze Stella's barrel because um, I really don't want a nice large dab of glitter in the middle. So I'm trying to carefully line the stitches only. Here I got a little bit off the stitches, but it is what it is. Okay, so then two more sides here. All right, so just a little extra. I don't know if any of that Stella is gonna show up for you, but it does add just a nice extra pop to the card. So, card one under our belt. Agreed, Lynn and Tyra, so beautiful. Okay, so moving on to card number two already. Next we have, ooh, the fully coral card. Okay, what do we, what do we got going on here? <laughs> okay, so this one we are just stamping a pattern on to our white pot. So here we've got the card base. Here we've got, interesting. So I feel like what I'm picking up here is that we are, so we got three pots total and I have a feeling that is because three on each of the cards, so or each of these die sheets. So I have a feeling that's to help for those of you that struggle with centering, um, give you a couple opportunities to do it over if necessary. Also, clearly they have the space for it, so. Okay, 
So let's get all of these pieces popped out. Okay, one. So pretty. Okay, so the sentiment is pre-printed on the coral banner because it's in white and obviously they didn't give us white ink and um, it's, it would have been hard to stamp a craft sentiment like that. So what I'm gonna do is stop right where I'm at. I'm gonna leave those in there. I think, I could be wrong, but I think that's gonna help me with my centering. I'm gonna grab my stamp and give her a go. Oh, another thing, we might be using this in a future card. I didn't think that far ahead, but we'll see what the next design looks like. Maybe one of these is for that. We'll see. Okay, so get your stamp on your block, and then my suggestion is to stamp some of that stickiness off. All right, so now I'm gonna be shooting for this one over here on the far right. Get your stamp nice and inked up. So like I lift, lifted it up and looked and wow, white is gonna be helpful here. Um, so when you're stamping, make sure that you give yourself a nice clear and full inkage on a stamp that has so much fill like this one. Um, Cause you surely will not get a good stamp image if your stamp is not completely generously coated in ink. You can tell that this stamp pad is about ready for re-inking. Oh boy. Because I am struggling here to fill the whole thing with ink. All right, let's give this a shot and see if we're going to be pleased with it. And also in my aggressive attempt to try to get it full of ink, I really, oh boy got a lot on the edges, so yuck. Okay, this is going to be a treat. I'm not feeling super good about a lot of things here. I'm not feeling super good about how centered it is and I'm not feeling super good about how covered it is. Okay, so not half bad. Don't want to do that again, though. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm being dramatic. Okay, so it pulled a little bit off to the left, um, but it looks largely pretty well centered. Um, it is... Don't mind Tigger. It is kind of blotchy, and it does have, like, probably my hair. Yep, it has my hair running through it, so there's a small little streak going through it, but that is okay. I'm going to take a quick second to rinse off this because I did get a lot on the black, so I will be right back. So your Stampin' Chamois can absolutely take all of that ink, but the more ink you have on your stamps or on your black, before you put it on the chamois, the more ink is going to go into your chamois, and then you just have to clean it sooner, which is no big deal, but I like to try to remember to pre-clean or stamp off, hi Karen, my stamps so that I'm not carrying too much excess ink onto it. Okay, good deal. Moving all of that over. May as well take my stamp off too. Again with the pink. We didn't stamp pink, but look at how pink that is. Okay, here we go. So next we are going to, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more before I do anything um, with it because I'm afraid I'm gonna get a fingerprint on there. Okay, so we are going to take our I'm gonna burnish this while it's right in front of me. Now we're gonna take our border and heavily stick it. <laughs> I 
So we've got left and right sides with the long strips. Okay. And then all of the rest of the sides get coated with the short ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, something just like wept into my eye and my eye is stinging. I'm trying hard to just like power through and let my tears take care of it, but ah, my eye is on fire and I don't know why. Okay. All right, so now we have heavy coverage on that. Piece. Okay, moving on. Okay, so then on the back of this piece, so we've got flowers um, printed on one side. So on the back side of that, again, the instructions show tear and tape. I'm going to preserve the tear and tape for a more purposeful use. And just go ahead and use liquid glue. All right, so we've got our foxy paper. If you can't tell, there's um, foxes on it. That's why I said that. Okay, so we're gonna center left, right, and top to bottom on this piece. Another reason why I'm happy to go with liquid glue here is I struggle visually centering things. So having that opportunity to give it a little quick flick up and have another opportunity to get it where I want it, always great. Okay, next we have dimensionals behind our flower pot or our vase whatever we like to call it. Um, go ahead and use a strip of the short if you're interested. Again, I'm just going to bring in my mini glue dots here. Okay. I don't know if this one's bigger than the other one or if I'm just feeling generous. I'm gonna put four on this one. Okay, again, the larger flared side goes to the top. And actually, okay, so I started by putting it here-ish, and I was like, oh, well, that one's a little short. If, I, if you look at the picture, you do want to bring it up to that short stem, and even it looks like um, the picture, it's maybe even up just a hair above that as well. Um, close to the base of that. Oh, sorry, I'm a little off here. I'm trying to center. Um, close to the base of the lower yellow flower. So that's how they are centered there. Um, then we've got tear and tape or liquid glue behind our sentiment. And last but certainly not least, we have the big border that is held up on dimensionals. So now, this Hello Friend goes at the bottom of the vase, centered left to right. There were three lines. We covered up two of them and the bottom of the flower design, and that last line is still visible. Okay, then we bring this in. Go ahead and peel the backs. Okay, that's not gonna work. All right. 
we are just about finished here. Then after this step, we have our embellishments. And barring any unforeseen issues, remembering to add some Stella. Woo. Okay, so I have a feeling this is the same size as the white piece. So we just want to get it right on top of, directly on top of the backing piece. I know, I do love this, the coral. Uh, Welcome in is all blues and whites. So a shade, all different shades of blue with white. So this coral is really throwing me, but not in a bad way. Also, I do really like how this one brought in a lot of white. This pattern, overwhelming is not quite the right word for it, but it, it really helps to, to dye down the pattern. Okay, so let's bring in some embellishments. We've got one centered between the green edge foliage on the top here. One beneath the bottom bud, and one off the sentiment. All right, there we go. Looking good. Let's bring in some Stella. Be sure to hit the thumbs up and share. Deb, aren't you just perfect on remembering that? Thank you for reminding everyone. And hello to Chris. Have you made it to Cedar Lodge? Chris is eating with her parents at my favorite restaurant of all time. It is literally just down the road from the house I grew up in that my parents still live in. <laughs> and spoiler alert, I still live um, in close proximity to where I grew up. So like it's still only five minutes from my house. Um, but they have the best cold strawberry soup. Well, I should say, I don't know that many places have cold strawberry soup. It's kind of like a smoothie. Um, it does sound very bizarre, but it is amazing. And they then your second, hmm. first course, I think your four, first course is soup or salad. No, is it soup and salad? I'm not sure. I haven't been in a while, but soup or salad. Then um, fresh fritter or fresh fruit. Um, I always, you, you just always got to go with the fritter. You cannot go wrong with a the fritter. Um, then of course your entree. Um, so it's like a four course meal. It is so dang good. <laughs> oh, pretty. I love the frame too. The frame elevates the card, no pun intended, um, cause it is on dimensionals, but it elevates the whole feel of the card. I love it so much. Very cool. All right, two cards done. Cedar Lodge is your favorite too. I love it. It is so dang good. Um, we have many supper clubs in our neck of Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> we are a highly Germanic, or we have a lot of German heritage here in this area. Um, so there are a lot of supper clubs and they are just so dang good. All right. Happy birthday to mom and Tom. Agreed. All right, now we have a horizontal card next. Two pieces of stamping here. All right, so we've got, oh, yep, see, I was a little mistaken, mistook, I should say. Where, okay, wow, it is right in front of me. Okay, so we are going to be stamping on this piece as well. So there is one extra pot for both of the cards. So if you make a mistake on one or the other, you have one extra pot here. Um, I'm going to stamp on this one and then let's bring in the correct stamp. And we also need the piece, the banner piece with the yellow stitch. Oh no, it's not stitching. Or close with the yellow um, little flowers running around it. Okay, so we need welcome on the, the banner and supper. Oh my goodness, great old fashions. So 
I love Old Fashions. That is, I think, my favorite drink. Um, not much of a uh, drinker, but I do enjoy um, some drinks. Man, Old Fashions are my favorite. Um, I do want to take an opportunity to expand my horizon. Uh, my go-to is a Mount Royal Light, which is a whiskey Old Fashioned Sweet. Um, but I really want to try, for those of you that don't know, um, Old Fashions can be sweet or sour, which is determined. I am not <laughs> the one who should be teaching about this because I'm not positive, but um, determined by the soda base, if I am correct, which a sweet would be like a Sierra Mist or a um, Sprite, and a sour would be um, Squirt. And I'm sure there's other options as well. And then you have the whiskey or brandy. And I like Mount Royal Light. So man, I need to get myself an old fashioned. <laughs> that sounds so yummy. Okay, so we've got welcome. And then we're going to bring in that big background-esque stamp. So it fits that way. I'm gonna pop this out because it's clearly bigger than the space that we are stamping on. And we're actually just stamping on the bottom three quarters. Ooh, Southern Comfort. Okay, that makes sense. And then of course with a cherry or a spear of cherries. Um, <laughs> Very, very yummy. I had an old fashioned in, um, where was I? St. Louis, when I went for my children's museum convention last year. And I made the mistake of thinking that someone could make an old fashioned as good as we can make them here in Wisconsin. And I'm not trying to sound um, conceited by any way, shape, or form, but. I've heard it from many others as well that Wisconsin just has a thing with old fashions and it is very difficult to replicate the deliciousness of a Wisconsin old fashioned. So I am struggling here. I'm gonna go ahead. So it looks like we are going to run the stamp All right, well, it's stuck. Okay, so I tethered it to this leaf right here, and I made that be the bottom. Oh my goodness, where my fingernail is compared to where you're seeing is like way askew, but just trying to help here. Um, so that leaf, I lined up for the bottom of the pot, and then it took it up about, well, three quarters was a, a bad <laughs> estimation. It's more like, uh, seven eighths, but most of the way to the top, but leaving a little white at the top. So that is how we go ahead and stamp that bad boy. Get some of that excess ink off, get this cleaned up and out of our way. Get that sunk in there because there's a bunch of ink just hanging out in the middle. A lot of tiny crevices in here um, that the ink can just hang out in. Wisconsin is tapped when it comes to old fashioned. I think Wisconsin has a way with um, with drinking. <laughs> not not necessarily in a bad way, but yes, I think you are right, Karen. It does look really pretty. I'm very excited. So now this one is more of what I was expecting with the complete monochromatic blues. But very cool how they brought in some color on the other ones. Okay, so now we are gonna go ahead and fold our card and give it a nice burnish. I am sure my bone folder is right in front of my face and I just can't see it, but I've got these nails, may as well use them. Okay, so next we have, oh, I didn't bring it in yet. Haha, ha. wait, did I? 
All right, pause. Missing some pieces. Here we go. Oh, are these two different sizes? No, they're not. Okay. Um, I have that leftover from a different one. Hi, Tigger. Okay, so we're going to punch out this piece. Hello. So there's Tigger. <laughs> uh, checking things out. Must have heard that Chris was here. Virtually, though, Tigger. Just virtually. Okay. So, again, I'm going to opt to use my liquid glue here. Tigger's gonna make himself at home for a minute. And just like that, he's off. Okay, back to the banners. I'm bringing the long skinny banner. Oh, hello, Denise. Thank you so much for commenting, longtime watcher. Um, I hope you are enjoying tonight's Paper Pumpkin. We are finishing up the last card and then we will be moving on to an alternative, which to be perfectly honest, I am not quite sure where that one's gonna go yet. Okay, so we are, ooh, I'm seeing a little bit of, huh. Okay, so I stuck it here because that's how it looks like here. But when you move down here, it appears as though our blue strip has moved down. <laughs> not quite sure where it's supposed to be. It is here for now. I'm not moving it. Um, so we will see what that looks like as we move into this. Okay, so we have our, um, what's this called? Sentiment on a short dimensional and our middle blue vase on a short dimensional going vertically. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep this um, minimally adhered because it looks like we're going to tuck the other ones under it. So we can't put more on there and I think that one will be fine. Okay, so go ahead and center this. which brings us to right about there. Um, it looks like this one goes on top of the banner and I'm not, mm, see, here's why. Okay, so if you center this vertically with that sentiment and then you go ahead, so this is kind of how it looks, that is too high. I don't like how close that is to the top there, so. I don't know if we are going to be able to lift up that light blue. Um, sorry to anyone who's crafting along with me who was just following the instructions that were just a smidge misleading. And if I would have noticed it a little bit sooner, I would have maybe um, tried not to stick that there, but too little, too late. Okay, so that was extremely nerve wracking. Did not come up very well. I do have, oh boy, an adhesive eraser. So now I'm gonna try to eradicate some of that adhesive without making it too noticeable. Obviously the little bit of torn paper is not going anywhere. Um, so we'll have to be strategic about where we place it next to try to cover some of that. Um, if you use the tear and tape, there's a chance that it might've come up better. Uh, there's a chance that it didn't come up very good for you either. Um, but hopefully you're not quite as far as me or you're just watching me and you're gonna do yours later, um, in which case you can prevent the travesty and put it in a better place in the first place. Okay. Adhesive eraser was instrumental in salvaging this mess. <laughs> okay, starting over now. We are going to put 
the banner in a little bit of a better spot. So taking direction from the lower pieces, I would advise putting this like in line with that middle stitch, if that makes sense. Okay, and I honestly think some of the pots that we have are going to cover that perfectly. Okay, next we are going to, I'm gonna put a new dimensional on this because I all of the stickiness is still on the blue strip. Okay, and then I'm gonna recenter this, which brings it down quite a bit. Also, um, I kind of, look at that, covered up all that tearage, great. Okay, so back to this. Now we are in a much better spot here. Um, so according to the picture, it looks like the pot covers the sentiment. I'm gonna see what it looks like with the pot behind the sentiment, which I personally like better. Um, do whichever you prefer, sorry. Um, do whichever you prefer, but I am a fan of it tucked behind the sentiment. Okay, then we have tear and tape behind our pots. I'm gonna go ahead and use my fabulous liquid glue, tuck them behind. I'm going to pull that out and do something about that. Okay, we'll do this one because there's no question about it. That one goes here and... Okay, so basically, I'm gonna verbalize. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do it on both. So this is what it looks like when you just stick her down, which there's nothing wrong with. Um, but I don't like how, especially on this one, it completely just blends in with the background. Now, I understand not putting a dimensional behind it because we want the focal to be on these two pieces that are dimensionalized. Um, may I have multiples of past class kits you still have? So, absolutely, Denise. I don't know what past classes are all left, but absolutely reach out to... Chris via her email address um, or any other mode of communication that you communicate with her and she will be able to let you know what she has left. Also, we do have one, if you are specifically talking just about Paper Pumpkin, there is one Paper Pumpkin that we have left. It was from April, 2023, which was called All the Little Things. So that is that. Okay, I pulled these off before the glue dried and I am going to sponge around the edges of them to give them some definition from the white background and the white, um, the white background of the vases and the white of the card base. So just going to put a little bit of, and I thought this one would have been fine and it was much less of an issue to me than the, um, the one that had all the white at the top, but I still think it is going to really help to have that. First of all, it'll be then the same as the one that it's next to. And also when I stuck it down, I noticed that it could use a little definition too. Um, seriously, my brain is feeling like it's in a mighty cloud. So I don't know if I just said this or not. And if I did my sincere apologies, um, when we stick these down, so the base of the vase is sitting, how I'm doing it at least, the base of the vase is sitting on the light blue ribbon and then I took the top of the vase and tucked so we're going to tuck that behind we're going to sit it on the blue ribbon and then um oh my goodness that was not intelligent I kind of had it just 
that you can just see it peeking out. Not that it was like under it too far that you wouldn't see the rim of the vase. Okay, put some glue behind this one as well. Then um, once the replay is up, you'll be able to kind of see what it was like before if you want to and make a decision for yourself whether you like um, how it looks better with the sponge around the edges or whether you liked it better without. So I am happy I did that. It is a lot less subtle though. So if subtle is what you're going for, you may not want to do that. Okay, so then we have some embellishments again. And the first embellishment is hanging off over here. Um, a little maybe less intentionally placed because it kind of looks like it's hanging off next to the vase, but I do still like the vase behind. So that's my choice and I'm sticking to it. And I'm gonna stick that one there. And this one here. Um, speaking of making an intentional choice, I might then, cause this seems like it's kind of hanging out in no man's land. I might then put this one. Down there. I don't know if I like it better or not. Okay, wonderful. We have three completed cards. I am going to clean up my mess just a bit while I let you guys check them out. I'll put them in order that we created them. Oh, I didn't do Stella. Where should we put, hey, there it is. I knew it would be right in front of my face. Where should we put Stella on this card? Let's do on the background vases. Okay, now it is, oh good, I like, everyone likes um, yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy that everyone is a fan of the sponging. Okay. So on the stamped image, sometimes Stella can not smudge, not smear, but kind of a little bit blend the, the stamped. So I'm going to go over the stamped part first and then go back up in the white part in hopes to not really smudge too much ink into the white of the vase. So that's what that looks like if you can catch some of that Stella, um, another strong improvement in my opinion. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna do just a smidge more picking up before we move on to our alternative. All right, so what is your favorite of the three cards that we made? Oh, I actually very much like all of them. Um, ooh, I, mm. I think I'm gonna go with the last one though. Ah, Cindy, I agree. We said it at the same time, at least according to the comments. Um, I think I like the last one very very pretty okay and i am pulling together some inspiration for how to do the alternative while you guys are checking out the cards and voting on what your favorite is i am going to grab a little bit of supplies for the alternative Not 
Jean. I'm way too. All right. Oh, Tyra is interested in the April paper pumpkin. So that may or may not be available. Um, I don't know if she already pulled and still has that left or not, but just to clear that up. All right, so we are looking at one and two. Oh, so one vote for the first one, and then it looked like a pretty even split between the other two. And that's where my brain was too. Um, I was kind of deciding between these two, which is funny because when I first saw this card base, I was like, mm, no, I don't like it. But it, like I said, it's tasteful with all of the white that we brought into it. So, um, but ultimately I did choose the navy one as my favorite. Okay, so I brought in the countryside corners um wow this is really cool so um it looks like what we've got going on here this stamp and that size with the die cut is what they used for this banner this stamp and the coordinating size so all of these pieces are extremely reproducible <laughs> So I'm floored because you absolutely can easily recreate these stamp these cards even without the paper pumpkin kit. Now you might need to use some of your own DSP. You might need to use some of your own flower floral stamps. But you can between the stamps that we've got here and the welcome in dies, which will die cut out the larger flower pot. However, you could use the larger flower pot on all of these. You could easily recreate these. So very cool. Happy to see that. Maybe that's why they included um, this, the flower and the stem too. So I'm trying to think here. Uh, usually when I make an alternative, I like to make something that doesn't necessarily super replicate what we created but is inspired by what you created because honestly if this is not your cup of tea and you got it I want you to be able to use the set and use the contents to create something that you did like so I'm going to try to use that philosophy um the other thing that was ringing in my mind as we were creating these cards was two of the three card bases. Here, I've got a little bit of a mess on my hands. <laughs> okay, two of the three card bases were on quote-unquote DSP. So this is basically replicated with just a piece of nice Knight of Navy cardstock. Now, of course, if you do Knight of Navy card. Car Knight of Navy cardstock. Um, it won't be white on the inside, so you would need to mat on the inside with a piece of white or corresponding colors. But when I do paper pumpkin, I am a really frugal person, and I see things that are ways to extend the kit. So if I would have right off the bat been starting with this from scratch not really worrying too much about the instructions i would have gone ahead and split these in half right off the bat and that's where i'm going to start where i'm going to lean in with my alternative um is is through inspiration like that um because you can easily especially after we just discussed how easy it is to replicate these pieces without extra kit pieces these cards um could easily be trimmed and then just adhered to a card base and now you can make twice as many of them. So I think, I think I'm going to use the boxy pattern. I'm a little afraid um, because I don't wanna commit myself to something and I don't also want to make it look too similar to this, but I think I'm going to do this, so we will see. Um, I'm going to leave this over here as inspiration, but not try not to get too pigeonholed by it. So as stated, I'm going to go ahead and instantly chop this. 
right down the score line. Okay. Okay, so now I think what I'm gonna do, and I'm not sure if this is exactly what I want to do or not, but I'm following my intuition and it may lead me astray, so bear with me. Okay, so Calypso Coral is the card that we have here. I don't have a full sheet of Calypso Coral, so I might just make a card front. Unfortunately, I don't usually like doing that because, where are my instructions? Um, because then you get stuck with a card that usually doesn't end up on a card front and no one wants that, but it is what it is. I'm not going to take a run in the house and upstairs to get one. Um, the other color I could probably use is Blushing Bride, if that is even still. Okay, but yeah. Blushing Bride may be doesn't even exist anymore. Like I said, I haven't had an opportunity to completely study this catalog. So I know some colors were tired. So I think I'm gonna make a card front because I can't quite make a full card out of this scrap. So my apologies, but this is all part of the process. And like I said, I did not even peek. Sometimes I have a halfway decent idea of what the alternative may or may not look like. This time I'm going in blind. Um, so bear with me, I you know, some of the best creations come out of a path that is heading nowhere. Okay, so we've got, uh, let's go like this. Okay, so here is going to be our five and a half. Here's going to be our card base, quote unquote follow my imagination. Um, because of the directional DSP that is on the original card base, it has to be a vertical card. I would have, if I, that color is retired. Oh my goodness, Blushing Bride. I loved Blushing Bride. Well, sad face, but there are a lot of beautiful new colors and there were a lot of pinks so that is a-okay um if i had a full sheet of calypso coral here i would make this a vertical open card i think that adds a nice element of not surprise but of something a little different um and those small details make a big difference when it comes to um sometimes the simpler cards that being said, I'm not quite sure if this is going to be a simple card or not, but we will find out. Okay, so... I'm envisioning... different ways that we could do this to make a cool card. Yeah, I could. I'm actually wondering if I want to do a white card base. It's so funny you say that. Okay. I'm I'm having a vision. Okay, but do we really not have basic white either? Okay, there's some white. <laughs> oh, you guys. Oh, funny. Need to restock our paper. Okay, so I've got this upside down. All right, so in line with that thought, we're going four and a quarter. Scoring at five and a half. And then burnishing with our bone folder. Okay, so here are the elements that I'm working with. Um, 
and I think I'm gonna be a little ballsy. Sorry about that word. <laughs> Couldn't come up with anything alternative. Um, and go ahead and cut this right away. Now, I don't know. Oh, man. Okay, so I brought the Boho Blue Mini Embossing Machine because I thought it was so perfect with this welcome in and the blue tones we've been dealing with, but I want to center this and I want to potentially keep this piece. So I don't think I can use this because I don't think the platform is big enough for this. So man, I was trying to be cute, but I'm gonna go get the full size die cutting machine and I will be right back. Why is this not? All right, we got the big boss. Now, wow, this is unlike my normal alternatives. For any of you that have not watched me before, usually I try to be pretty sparingly on my extra supplies because I don't know what you guys have and I want you guys to be able to make whatever I make, even with limited supplies. But I am inspired. Okay, I haven't um, used the boss in a while, so I don't wanna make the wrong sandwich. Okay, so when I am putting this down, ooh, there's a big split in this one. Hopefully it still cuts. Okay, I want to be very careful that I am centering this as close to centered as possible because I might, um, in my little mind of minds, I have a vision of maybe using this outside piece. So I'm trying as best as I can to smidge it this way and smidge it that way to get it as centered as possible. And we're gonna go with this. All right, a nice easy crank there. Looks pretty centered, maybe just a smidge off, but it's what we've got to work with. Okay, so though, there are those two pieces. While I have this out, I'm also going to um, Go ahead and do the next piece, which I think, now I'm hoping I'm not gonna get too much like the original card. Um, so we'll see what I come up with here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make that same outer frame. I think the frame really, really made the card in my opinion. So I'm gonna go ahead. Now, bear in mind, this is one stamp. So I'm gonna be getting a lot of images out of this one stamp. It is not even stickered up yet. So I don't think there's a right or wrong, like an up and down on this one. I. I haven't done this in a while, so bear with me. <laughs> oh no! A piece of it, it was like cut through, like sliced all the way through. Not good. So let's get this on the stamp. And it's not the right size, okay. Why are we struggling so much? Well, first of all, that's pretty on there. You guys. Also, 
this is the definition of struggle. So the sticker is just a little bigger than the stamp, at least this particular one was. So that was not great. And this little piece was sliced off, which is also not ideal. And we're live, so no, like, hey guys, I'm back. Okay, there we go. It's okay. So go ahead and put it on a block or a stamparatus. All right, so we got the big end. This is, what is this, an F? F. Get it on your F block. Calypso Coral. All right. Your preference, how you want to do this. Um, I was taught when doing a large stamp. I'm scared. So I don't want to get all of that edge on there. Oftentimes I'd go like this and I'd rub it on, but I'm afraid that I'm going to then rub that on. So I'm going to try the other way of flipping this over and trying to push it down firm enough that I get even coverage. Now the only saving grace here is that I really only care about the outer dots, but nice even wiggle left and right and top to bottom. All right, and then I'm gonna try to catch, wow. That stamped beautifully. <laughs> Watch me be super surprised. Okay. So I'm just trying to digest this stamp. Um, when I saw it for the first time, like I can see the beauty of the nesting dies and I can see the beauty of the floating frame like you see in the paper pumpkin, but um, you know, you really can't get it as an uh, as a border on a full like tag because um, you can't just stamp like say the flower border. So yeah, um, I think I heard that if you are interested, you probably can separate them using like a very sharp new X-Acto knife. But don't use my declaration right there. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. I did. I was like really nervous, especially after the chaos of that stamp. Um, I think you probably could use an X-Acto knife to go through, but you know, with that sticky foam, that might not be a great idea. So be very cautious if you do choose to do that because there's probably a good chance that you might ruin your stamp, which is sad because it is really pretty. Um, but oh man, now to get it off too. All right, there we go. Okay. Well, interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, at this point, that is garbage. Okay. Wow, I'm sweating. That was nerve wracking. Okay, so now I need the two outermost dies. Whoa. Oh, it's 7.30 already. Wow, time flies when I'm having fun. Okay, so, oh, boy. This is going to be a fun one to center. Holy man. And we got to center two of them. You're here for the entertainment, right? So. 
Just gonna try really hard to make it equidistant. Okay guys, this is very challenging. We're gonna go with that. Now there's always an opportunity for it to shift when I put this on. So I'm going to very gingerly hover it over the top and start cranking and literally praying that it didn't move. <laughs> oh, nervous laugh. Oh boy. Okay. Here we go, moment of truth. Oh my gosh, that was not half bad. So it's a little tight there, but it's kind of perfect down there. So I don't know if the die or the stamp aren't quite designed appropriately or not, but like, look here, that. So it is what it is. I did my best. It's pretty dang good. Um, not perfect, but that is a-okay. So there was a live look at using that stamp and those dies. Um, challenging, you, you could say, but very, very cool. Now I feel like we have the opportunity to do a lot more of that. So I don't know if we're gonna use that or not, but it's there. Okay, back to the task at hand. So if you just wanted to go ahead and replicate the card, bing, bang, boom, you're halfway there. But now what I want to do is I think I want to flip the script and go like this with this floating frame. Now, where are the rest of the pieces? Wow, I have a big mess. Not surprised, but just pointing it out. Okay. So here's the original. We're not trying to copy that, but we are trying to be inspired by it. Okay, here's where we're started. Now, I want to, instead of it being flush Calypso Coral, which is a good idea, that is hard. So has anyone else used that stamp and or die? I want your feedback on what you thought of it and um, if you'd ever do it again. Okay, so I'm gonna make a thin mat by just taking an eighth of an inch, I think. We're gonna start, you can always take more off. Okay, an eighth of an inch off each side. I just flung that really important piece far away. Okay, so I'm gonna do a teensy tiny mat. Ooh, I love it. I love tiny mats. Okay, so let's, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm all in. I'm going for it. Oh, I have an idea. Okay. Stick her down. Okay. Then, I feel like I'm gonna go like that. I feel like I'm gonna go like this. Now, I don't know what else I want to incorporate yet. Because I, I honestly don't want to go in the row because I, I want them to look like they match, but I don't want them to look like they clash, if that makes sense. Um, so I don't know that I want to bring this pot in and I don't know 
that I want to bring navy in. But I do need to put something in there. And I wonder if I go ahead, I need inspiration from the catalog. So we can start, I think it was like 60 something. Huh, that's pretty. Let's see, okay, so here's where we start. Now, normally I would want to bring in a sentiment or um, something from the stamp set that came with it. But as we noted earlier, the sentiments are all quite small and I have a large space that I'm dealing with. Um, I'm looking at this May the Years Ahead be filled with lasting joy, thinking that might be beautiful on here. Um, also. Okay. I'm gonna start committing to things because <laughs> then we're gonna start going places. Okay, this is directional DSP, so you want to make sure that your little uh, foxes are heading the right way. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and bring in the dimensionals from the kit. Okay, so absolutely 100% replicating what we got going on here. I think I'm one short here. So we just did this an hour ago. In case you forgot what we're doing, here we are again. My crazy fingernails. All right, one more. Now, if you were to make a bunch of these, you would um, surely run out from the kit, but have no fear. Use them until they're gone. You can always have get more. <laughs> It's very meditative. All right, I did it. So the side that's very tight, I am gonna put to the bottom. I hope it's going to be less noticeable there. It's not horrendous, but that's going to be my attempt at <laughs> hiding it. All right, we're committed. It's down. The other thing, <laughs> oh, it's committed, but um, here I have another idea. Dang it. Um, this would make a stunning shaker card. I am having instant regrets. <laughs> Um, oh man, do I do that? <laughs> Maybe I do it with this piece. I could put this down. I could put coral behind it. I could make another one of them, do a window sheet. I don't know where the window sheets are. Okay, so I'm not going to do it because I um, just sprung that out of nowhere. But you could do the largest die, the die cut out of a window sheet. You could stick the window sheet to the back of this layer. You would have to fill in all of the gaps with um, 
dimensionals because you cannot have shaker shaky shakies falling out everywhere um, and then you'd put some sequins in and boom it would be beautiful there that is my inspiration to you for making that magic happen um, this is going to go on the inside I already decided that so let's get that stuck down as well because I think that's going to be a super cute way to use this and that is why I very cautiously die cut it because I wanted to make sure that I could use that piece on the inside. Okay, boom. Again, directional foxes. You really only see one up in the top here. And you just gotta make sure that it closes. It needs to be down just a smidge from the seam so that there's enough room for it to close. So you can see here, like it's not quite all the way to the top, but it's very, 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 very close. And then um, that of course smidged it down just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna trim that off. All righty, here we go. I love it. Shaker would be gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad. Um, I think I want to make it happen. <laughs> I'm so scared of the thought of that. Um, let me... I was like, can I use vellum? I can use vellum, but I shouldn't. Um, also, I just used the piece. <laughs> I stuck it down. Okay. All right. I'm sad. There's a chance I might make that anyways. Oh, vellum. Okay, so let's be happy with this for a minute <laughs> and then I'm going to come back to the thought of a shaker which I will not do tonight because I have to go pick up my kids but um maybe I'll make that magic happen a different time I can't believe I forgot that I mean I didn't forget it I had I had the thought when we were making the card there <sighs> but of course I forgot it while while the alternative was brewing in my head. Okay, let's get this die cut. Oh my goodness, it's like I hold my breath while I'm trying to center it because it's so stressful. So now the stamp in the kit says a welcome and the stamp in the paper pumpkin kit that whoa, we used on a different card said welcome and I don't want to do welcome. So let's see here, very shifty. Okay. Okay, you're invited and friend and I don't love either of them, but I think welcome is gonna be what it is because of course we could do other stamp sets, but it is a very tiny space. So it would have to absolutely be a one-liner. Um, and I don't think I can come up with anything off the top of my head. Be right back. Okay, what 
ribbon is currently in the catalog. Um, I don't know that this is still around, but... Ta -da. Oh, look it! Ooh, that's... Ooh, that's pretty. So instead of cutting just the one, they die cut the two together. Um, love that. Oh, good gracious, that is not active, not active, not in the catalog anymore. I don't know where the current ribbon is. I want that three-quarter herringbone ribbon. Or the pecan pie, hmm. All right, give me one second while I jaunt. Okay, so I can't find it just on a very quick, I don't wanna pull away from the camera too long and leave you guys sitting here with radio silence. So I'm going to use the ribbon that I have accessible to me, which unfortunately is retired at this point in time, but the exact same concept could be done with a three quarter herringbone ribbon. Cause I do think this is three quarter inch anyway. So. This is the frayed ribbon, which was beautiful, is white. I love everything about it, but it does not currently exist in the Stampin' Up! arsenal. So you could obviously use whatever you have. Um, but in this instance, we are going to pretend that it is the three-quarter herringbone. I'm going to go ahead and stamp a welcome here. Totally pulling on a monochromatic um, color scheme right now. It is what it is. Um, you know, a pop of color might be nice, and I could have absolutely done a pop of color with either this uh, banner or, um, you know, of course, this was all stamped, and so then, boom, I just cut it out. But um, I did go ahead and use it. So we'll see. We're pulling it together. Um, I was planning here just to go like, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so now here absolutely is an appropriate place to use tear and tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I want it to start at the top. And a soft weave back and forth. Oh, so pretty. Feel like you would get the exact same effect with the new ribbon. Um, so just use your beautiful imagination here. Okay. Gonna top it off with a piece of tear and tape. Oh boy, that was too long. Ugh, just kidding, it was the perfect amount. So what I'm envisioning here, actually I'm going to peel that up and put a dimensional behind it because it kind of sinks to the back. I mean, it doesn't sink to the back, but it a little bit sinks to the back. Um, what I'm envisioning here is this being a card for a baby. So where did my dimensionals go? This point in the paper pumpkin, I've got stuff everywhere. Found him. So I'm gonna put 
a double stack of dimensionals off to the sides um, because that's really where it was sinking. Now we're gonna put that down. <laughs> I took that off already. Oh, cute. I love it. Oh, I love it. All right, one second. Uh, let's grab the catalog. All right, we need a focal image. We need something to have some purpose. All right, let's feel inspired. I'm going to rapid fire through the catalog because my eyes and brain are dialed in right now. Um, shout out any suggestions you have um, that you would like to see. Okay. Oh, the cute drop. Oh, sloth. My son has a slothy. It was a giveaway. Oh my God. Oh, happy day. That would have been perfect on there. Hmm, next time. Mm. So many ideas percolating through my pretty little mind. Um, so my son has a stuffed animal sloth that was a, a great baby card. You are so right. That was from the Fleet Farm Black Friday giveaway in 2018, which was the year he was born. And his godmother, um, okay, Little Dreamers, his godmother got it for him and gave it to him and it is now his go-to stuffed animal which i think is adorable um <laughs> so i could see that being beautiful i was wondering if does anyone know does this fox image come from a stampin up oh some embellishments i agree we definitely need some embellishments but does anyone know, does that fox come from any of the stamps? Because oftentimes that is, you know, they, they quote unquote steal graphics from other sets um, and throw them in there. And I could absolutely see that guy being a stamp. And if it was a stamp, that would be exactly what I'm looking for. So chime in if you know the answer. Watching from Arizona, hello. It is, ooh, you know, you're right, Vicki. I was, okay, so I think I made it to the front. Um, I was thinking, so either the owl, which is not ideal. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Man, so does anyone recognize that fox from anything? Because if it is achievable, I would absolutely bring that guy in. That is not the same fox, but it is dang close. See, there it is. So this is the DSP pattern, or, or very close, in the blue tone. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab those two stamp sets. And then we are gonna top off this beautiful creation. This one, like I said, um, I was not, I, I came at this with a very um, unprepared approach. So thank you for hanging with me as I pull this together. Okay, so. We have little baby big love welcome. Congra congratulations on your new little one. Okay, so I want that for sure.
Okay, we're taking a little pivot. Not much, but a teensy little bit. Okay, congratulations on your little one. Is going to go on the inside. Stamp in Calypso Coral. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. This is not really quite what I envisioned. Um, but that, that is okay. And whomever said embellishments, yes, we definitely need to bring on the embellishments. Okay, so how is that for an inside of a card? Because I'm loving it. Okay. You guys, I'm going crazy. Oh my gosh, I just had an idea and I'm not doing it, but... You could stamp congratulations on your new little one inside of this and then die cut around it. Now, again, I don't know how you'd get those dots without the inside, um, the one that we cut out with the welcome, but for anyone who has solved that mystery, please share. <laughs> so now I would have added like, okay, cause I could see the little squirrel being up there. That's not a bad one, but the illustration patterns aren't the same now granted this isn't exactly the same either um but i can see this working definitely better than the other one now is this that's the one that okay so you could do some punch art or i'm gonna stamp this guy I'm just experimenting here. So, oh, thank you, Holly. I, I'm feeling very scattered and chaotic. So I'm glad I'm not completely ruining it for you guys. Okay, so let's do some. I don't know, pecan pie? I haven't used it, so we're going to try it. It might not be the right one. I'm going to actually practice on this. Okay. Now I have an idea. Bear with me. Never done this before. I'm going to bring just a little bit of coral onto there. Now, I stamped off. Because that is maybe a little aggressive. Oh. I like it. So it just ties some of that coral in without overpowering the coral. And I think the first strength pecan pie would have been too aggressive. So for those of you that kind of, I kind of slyly snuck that in. I stamped on the pecan pie. I was afraid it was going to be dark. Because, um, you know, first strength, I can tell here, usually it is, even, it even stamps darker than the colors on here. It's like, mm, that's going to be a little strong. So I stamped it off, then flipped it over and brought in some Calypso Coral very lightly onto the pines on the back of my Pine Coney friend. And um, went ahead and then stamped it. So second strength pecan pie with first strength um, on our coral with the sponge dauber. All right, now we're going to punch this guy out in theory. That should work. Okay. Now he just matches the color scheme of our card oh so much better. Okay, he's definitely going on dimensionals. And what else do we have in here? I can see him enjoying a little bit of 
Maybe a mushroom, but that's too much. Maybe a butterfly, a butterfly on his nose. I don't know. I'm getting carried away in a fun and creative way. Of course, that is going to be fussy cut and I don't know, first or second strength, but either way, I will use that. I've only seen the fox on this paper. Oh, it makes me sad. That would have been a really easy way to tie this together. I do think the hedgehog is working out in my grand plan. So this is so funny. This is not at all what I was envisioning, especially because um, I knew it coordinated with Welcome In. So I really was narrowly walking down the path of the blue tones. So I was very surprised when I opened up this box. Very surprised when I um, chose to go with the coral one that my first inkling when I saw the coral was that I didn't necessarily like it but here we are <laughs> we're making it happen okay so now I need my dimensionals again which again are not in front of me but there they are I don't want to lose this little guy that I changed my mind on so now in starting over, which I unfortunately do not have the time to do. Um, so we're making this happen. They do. It's working out. Um, in doing this a different way, I totally 100% would have introduced pecan pie into this whole scheme of things. Maybe going so far as to... Um, Sorry, I can't think and multitask. Uh, maybe going so far as to even have pecan pie as the back, but definitely as these colors. I think that would have helped. And then I might have even taken the hedgehog at full strength. Um, that might have then worked. But I was trying to really stick with the monochromatic theme by bringing, pecan, um, by bringing Calypso Coral into his pines back there. Okay, we are now just forgetting... <laughs> to put some embellishments on. So last trip away from you, I promise. I'm going to go grab some embellishments and I will be right back to finish this bad boy off. So what are we going to find in our crazy embellishments? So my only reservation, this is not my favorite creation. I'm not like trying to poo poo it by any means. Um, but this is atypical for me, um, which is totally okay. Oh, God, guys, you guys, I'm so happy you guys are enjoying this because um, I'm struggling, um, and you're really making me feel a lot better. Um, the background is very busy, and then we have a very busy image in the hedgehog, so I think that's where my struggle is um, coming. 
coming from. Very much. I know that I'm, I'm confident that's where my struggle is coming from. Um, that's it. That's what I made. <laughs> My apologies if it didn't hit your cup of tea, um, but I hope you like it. Put some pearls on at the end. Um, Paper Pumpkin seems to either include a ribbon or an embellishment, usually not both, and I struggle with that because I like when my cards have a lot of pizzazz to them, and that means you need an embellishment and you need a ribbon. So. That is why I tried to bring in both. Um, but yeah, there we go. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Um, are you inspired? That is the most important question. Um, what, please, if you do make an alternative card, um, inspired by this or not, please share with us what you created because we love to see it. Um, I'm just trying to find my original cards because I always like to bring them together so you can see everything we made tonight. So bear with me as I do that. But I've got a serious problem. <laughs> so many things. Okay, so now the card is somewhere else. It's at the bottom of the pile. All right, so what's your favorite creation that we made tonight? Share with me, because I love to hear it. Oh, I almost lost the stamp again. You're inspired, great, I'm so happy. I'm happy that you, I hope everyone had a good time. I had a great time. Um, I'll be back next week for game night. I can't believe it's next week already. Um, game night featuring Zany Zoo, I think. So more animals, you guys. Very exciting. All right, so what's your favorite card that we made tonight? Mine is, <laughs> you guys, I'm, I'm going to make you laugh. It's one of these two. I said this one earlier. I really still like this one too. So one of these two, but also in all reality, it's the shaker card that's like living in my head. <laughs> that's where it is right now. Um, I do, I really, really love this part of this card though. Um, what a fancy inside. So great. I hope everyone had a great time tonight. We do still need to do our random number generator. So we have 19 participants. Let's see here. Random number generator. One through 19. And our winner is lucky number 11. So Patsy Roberts, it is time for you to be our lucky, lucky winner. So, Vicki, you haven't received yours either. You're the second one on here that has said that. So, sorry to hear that. Um, I hope you get it soon. And then when you do, I hope you are inspired to create with it. So, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I had a wonderful time. Um, if I have the opportunity to, which I don't know if I will, um, I do want to make that shaker card. And if I do, I'll post it in the Cards by Christine page. Um, so keep an eye out there if you see one. I, um, I really hope to make it. I think that would be a beautiful creation. Um, we'll see if I can work out a time to get back here um, and bring that out of my head. Um, but I hope you have a great night and a fantastic weekend and a fantastic 4th of July. Um, stay safe, have fun, and lots of sunshine, love, and big hugs headed your way.